Hello again, eighth graders. It's week nine. This is lesson three. Um, we're going to be in our textbook on page 366 still. Let's start off with a quiz. This is about our homework from yesterday, so hopefully you did that or else it's going to be a little challenging to answer. So here we go. Salt water has a higher density than fresh water. True or false? And so I want you to look at the picture that was very similar to our experiment. We have um, two containers, one with fresh water, one with salt water, and it looks like we have an egg. Um, and the egg looks like the same shape, it's the same material, so they both have the same density. And I see in fresh water that the egg is sinking, but in salt water the egg is floating. And please remember, something sinks because it has a higher density than the liquid it's in. On the other hand, something will float if it ha is less dense than the liquid it's in. So what do you think? Does salt water have a higher density based on what you learned from yesterday and what I just explained in this little picture? Five, four, three, two, one. It's true, salt water has a higher density because there are more particles squeezed in to that solution because now we have water molecules plus salt molecules. Um, this is why you might feel a little more buoyant or uh, like you float more in salt water. It's true, you do. I wanna talk what our goal for the lesson is today. It's a little bit different. Um, from past lessons because we're just going to review page 366 and I'm going to do something new today. Um, I'm going to read slower and I'm going to pause. All right, so I'm going to read slower and at the end of the sentence I'm going to pause and I'd really like you to try to answer before I say the, before I reveal the correct answer. The correct answer is going to be in blue. So see if you can answer the question before me and if you can then that means that you have a pretty good understanding of this topic. If you're struggling a little bit you might want to go back and watch lesson one and two again from week nine or go back and read the text book. All right, so let's start off with our first review. What are two climate events that take place every two to seven years? And the title and the two pictures should give you a hint. They are El Nino and La Nina. El Nino and La Nina both take place in the Pacific Ocean. Now remember, we in Buffalo, New York, we're not located anywhere near the Pacific Ocean. It is on the opposite coast of the United States. It's on the West Coast. We are on the East Coast. Although El Nino and La Nina take place in the Pacific, they can affect weather around the world. If you said around the globe or uh, globally, those are all fine answers as long as they makes sense. It doesn't matter if they're not word for word. El Nino Review. Please use the map on this page to help answer the questions. Winds reverse directions and blow west to east. Warm water reaches the west coast of, so use the map, Warm water is represented with red arrows, and what continent is that hitting those red arrows? South America. El Nino also stops, hmm, 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 from reaching the surface of South America. So there's a missing word between stops and from, two missing words. So I'd like you to look where this yellow circle is. Okay, notice it's red. So if it's red there, what's red represents warm. What's the opposite of warm? Cold. So El Nino will also stop cold water from reaching the surface water of South America. All right, moving on. La Nina is the opposite of El Nino. So in El Nino, weak winds blow west to east. Remember, we're still in the Pacific. So if weak winds blow west to east, what's going to happen in La Nina? Stronger winds blow east to west. And remember, it's the opposite. 
In El Nino, warm waters move east. What's going to happen for La Nina? Warm waters move west. For El Nino, there are warm surface waters. So what's going to happen for La Nina? It will be the opposite. Cold surface waters. Let's look at what results happen in El Nino and La Nina. Okay, in the central U.S., El Nino can cause, please look at the map, find the central U.S., I circled it in yellow, what can El Nino bring or cause within that yellow circle? Read the labels on the map. In the central U.S., El Nino can cause warmer winters. Now I switched it to La Nina. The map has changed. In the Pacific Northwest, La Nina can cause, I'm gonna circle the Pacific Northwest in yellow for you. Here we go. Please read the map, read the labels. Let's try again. In the Pacific Northwest, La Nina can cause cool, wet weather. Okay, we're gonna end with a quiz, but there are two questions for this quiz today. So please don't sign off until we get to question two. After question two, feel free to get rid of me. Number one, which of the following conditions can bring flooding to Central California and warm winters to the Northeastern US? A, El Nino, B, La Nina, C, Coriolis effect, or D, North Atlantic drift? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to get rid of the Coriolis effect because that it makes curved winds and ocean currents based on Earth's rotation and tilt. I'm also going to get rid of the North Atlantic Drift because that is a surface current that brings warm water up the southeastern coast, like up near up to Florida. So correct answer is El Nino that will bring flooding to California and Texas and can bring warmer winters to the other parts of the states. Last question number two, what makes winds and ocean currents move in a curved direction? A, Earth's position from the sun, B, unequal pressure, C, density, or D, Coriolis effect? Five, four, three, two, one, feel free to pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate density because we learned about winds and ocean currents way before we learned about density. That was yesterday's lesson, so I don't think, I don't think it's density. I'm also going to hit or get hit, <laughs> get rid of unequal pressure because that's what causes winds to flow. It's always going to flow high to low. Um, but it doesn't make it curved. So correct answer is Coriolis effect. That has to do with how the earth spins and how the earth is tilted. And so winds and ocean currents don't go in a straight line. They curve a little bit.